Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. My name is Crystal, and I garden south of Houston along the Texas Gulf Coast in Zone 9. And I welcome you to our backyard today because I am going to be doing our September garden tour. It's already the end of the month. It's hard to believe that it's time for the garden tour. But what I would like to do is I would like to start, first I'd like to pan my backyard like I showed you, and then I'd like to start in a particular area. And this month in September, I'm going to go around the corner to the south side. So in the south side, this is like a, a small a little alcove. We don't see it from anywhere unless we come back here. But what's important to me is that this little section back here, it gets full sun, it's super hot in the summertime, and it gets pretty much full shade in the wintertime. And that's because of the six over six foot fence that casts the shadow in the winter. But there's usually quite a bit going on in here and I'm gonna go all the way to the back. So in the back back here, you can see that I have got these fire bush that have really grown. So they are taller now than my fence. And the fence is about six and a half feet tall. And they are blooming like crazy. And the smaller leaf, which is a uh, smaller it has a smaller bloom also is just blooming prolifically and the hummingbirds so we have hummingbird migration at this time and they are just loving all these blooms and then I have next to it a larger leaf firebush and these have larger flowers and you can see got lots of nice berries on them now the birds love to eat these berries and i'm really happy with the fire bush i have three and actually i have found i've got four because apparently i have a volunteer small leaf coming back in actually coming in over here but what I do is if we freeze, I cut these, you know, maybe about a foot above the ground and the growth on these is just this spring and summer and they grow beautifully. So I've had these in the ground for four years now and they do grow bigger every year, even though they've come up from the ground every year. So the other thing I want to share with you is way back in here, and this happens to be um, an experiment that I did. And I had a Mexican flame vine that I had in a pot last year, and I broke a little section off. And so what I did is I put it in, and I rooted it. And it I rooted it in water, and then I planted it, and it just plant you know it it grew beautifully well I accidentally left it out in the freeze in its little container and I thought it was dead but lo and behold in the spring it starts coming up from its roots and so I planted it back here and it has grown so it is growing and then over here on these sections it has grown taller than the fence. So I am going to leave this back here to see how this is going to do. Because my other plant back here is not grown very well and it usually is taller than my fence right now. This is, um, I think it's called a, a tropical honeysuckle but it's not truly a honeysuckle. 
and it usually is taller than my fence, but instead it has grown along the side of the flower bed. So a little bit disappointed in that this year. This is also four years old. So we'll see what happens with my Mexican flame vine. But anyway, I love the, the, the star of the show here. And the reason I have this bed back here is purely for the fire bush or the Hemelia patens. And that's just because of what it provides for the pollinators in the wildlife. All right. So in front of this bed, I've got quite a lot of stuff stuff going on and this happens to be a bed that I've you know tried different things and you can see I have a very beautiful stand in the center here of Greg's mist flower which is a native I've talked about Greg's mist flower before I did a video on it I think last fall and so I will put that up at the top of the screen if you'd like to see that and I've got some pink pentas back here. I have, it's kind of a hodgepodge of things. I have Salvia farinacea, which is a native to Texas. I have Salvia leucantha, which is the Mexican bush sage. And then I have quite a few back here of the giant milkweed. And so I am very pleased with how all of this is looking back here. Okay, I'm going to come out to the front. So towards the front, I have a Pride of Barbados, which I love. I've got a pink porter weed. I've got a blue porter weed over here. And then I've got quite a few volunteer porter weeds that are coming up. I do have a kufia. This one isn't flowering very well. Um, I do have it in a container so it I cut it back pretty good in the spring but it even though it's gotten full sun I guess it just doesn't like its spot here. This is a vermillionaire by Proven Winners. And then I've got quite a few of these blue Selvi, I mean the blue porterweed back here that have self-seeded. So I have found that the blue salvia self-seeds very prolifically. It's so pretty. Pollinators love the porterweed. And then I only have a couple of butterfly bushes left because they do not do well in our climate. Um, but this one happens to be a lo and behold series from proven winners that I have in a container so I can control somewhat control the the amount of water that it gets okay now I'm going to turn around and even though we're at the end of September the gardens are just responding beautifully because our hot hot weather of close to 100 degrees or over 100 degrees has finally come down to the low 90s and so during the day we get to be you know 91 92 93 degrees which the plants much prefer and then in the evening we'll get down into the 70s which is so much better than staying in the, the 80s or the high 80s and so our plants as you can see are just loving this type of weather so here I have right here is this candlestick alata and you can see the blooms on this I love the sun is just starting to come out these are fun and I'm sure these are seed pods so I'm gonna have to um, keep these because some of my viewers have commented that this grows very readily from seed and it is the host plant to the sulfur butterflies or the yellow butterflies that we see flying around. And as I come around I have a purple porter weed. You know me, I if you follow my channel you know I'm a huge porter weed fan which is in the verbena family. And the reason I'm a 
fan is because I am a butterfly, hummingbird, and pollinator gardener. And this flower, even though it only flowers along a section of the bloom spike each day, the flowers fill, refill with nectar for the pollinators. And so this is just filled with pollinators all throughout the day. But I have to show you this. I'm so excited because the only reseed that I've had is, look at this. This is the blue porter weed and it reseeds prolifically. I love it. I love it. It's right next to the red porter weed, which is probably one of the favorites of the pollinators. But I have a purple porter weed over here that receded from the ground. And I absolutely am excited because I've got now some porter weed in the ground. I know they're tender. I know they don't do well in the winter. So if you freeze, they will not come back. But I'm going to try to protect these crowns of the plants to see if I can get them to return. So this is the first color outside of blue that has reseeded itself for me. And you might say, well, what do you mean by reseed? Let me show you one of these spent bloom stalks. There are seeds all along in here. And so this is where you pull your seeds from. And they're usually at the junction where the leaf growth is. And you can just cut these and, um, and pull the seeds and plant the seeds. All of mine that have reseeded have done so on their own. So it has not been anything that I've done. So in this bed, I have multiple things. I've still got my John Fanick Phlox that is, that is flowering. I've got a Tithonia back here. This is a volunteer that reseeded itself. I have the Blue Chiffon Rose of Sharon. It's kind of getting overtaken by or overshadowed here by all this porterweed going on but I've not taken the porter weed out because it's self-seeded and I've just wanted to see what it is going to do this year. If you hear the little squeaking sounds, those are my, oh, I've got about four or five female and or juvenile hummingbirds that are in the yard. And so you'll hear them coming through and, and, and talking to each other, escorting each other out. So love, love, love all the porter weed going on. And you can see my red porter weed plant here. I do have it in a very large container. And this porter weed is huge. Let me get on the other side. Its bloom spikes are now larger and taller than our fence. And this is in one year. So I planted this from a um, regular gallon size pot. Um, container from the nursery this spring and it just has been a beautiful bloomer for me all spring summer and now fall long all right as I turn this way I have got a hot lip salvia that I've shared with you and I wanted this plant for a long time and I finally got it and <laughs> it's supposed to be bicolor, red and, and white. And when the color, when the, when the temperatures get lower, I'm sure I'll start seeing that again. But I'm not really a huge fan of how it grows. I'm just, this is, ugh, I don't know how much I like this hot lip salvia. So in the spring, I loved it. I love the smell. I'm not a huge fan of how it grows, so I'm on the fence about keeping hot lips. But it's only been my first year, so maybe I need to go through another year. And then I have the trellis of all of this going on, which is passion vine. And passion vine is the host plant to 
quite a few different butterflies, but what we have the most of here south of Houston along the Texas Gulf Coast is the Gulf Fritillary. And so I have this hybrid called Incense. And let me go on the end here. And then I have this one, which is called cotton leaf and it's it's fuzzy and this one is a native to Texas the cotton leaf passion vine and so I have two here that support lots of gulf fritillary caterpillars and this is the flower of that cotton leaf passion vine I've got a I've got a native bee here that is protecting his territory. He didn't want me around that flower. And then in the middle part of this garden bed where I have the trellises, I have Flamacanthus, which is a native to Texas. It's also a host plant. And then I've got the gorgeous vine over here and I'll get over there in a second which is the the um, cardinal climber the red cardinal climber but over in what I call my tree bed I have the Mexican bush sage or salvia lucantha this got hit hard by our hurricane and quite a bit of it got broken down and broken off. This is about the only little piece that I have left of it. So let me, of course they are coming up from the ground, but I usually have this whole section full of, of the salvia lucantha, and I only have this little, this little bit right here. Oh, I've got, you see, you see the hummingbird? They are busy, busy this morning. So in my tree bed, I'm gonna come around to this side. So in the tree bed, I have some Salvia Amistad, some Salvia Amante, and then I have the Mounding Lantana, which I just did a video on of the Blumify series of this Lantana. And I'll link that video up at the top. This, this lantana grows beautifully down here in the south in zone 9 and it comes back for me every year. It's just gorgeous. And I have red and then I also have rose, which is here. I had a um, commenter in Galveston tell me they have a pink bloomify and I'm, I'd love to see that. I know there's a white and I think there's a yellow or a white kind of cream color one and in between I have some Greg's mist flower now with this mist flower I had something that laid in it almost all summer long and flattened it and I am keeping it trimmed up so it doesn't come out into the grass and that has caused it not to bloom very well so it does have some blooms on it but not many and then I have my David Verity Kufia, which is tall. It's, it's taller than I am, and I'm five feet tall. It loves its spot. It's kind of taken a little bit of a break on all the blooming that it does. I think I might need to fertilize it. I've not fertilized it at all. And so I think it is time because I still have a good two months of growing left in the season. Okay, now I'm going to turn around. And this is what my hummingbirds, well, they love all the flowers in the yard, but the hummingbirds right now particularly go for all of these red flowers of the cardinal climber. And the cardinal climber is a vine that just grows and grows and grows and it blooms for me, starts to bloom, well, it blooms a little bit throughout spring and summer, just little blooms here and there, but it just puts on a show like this in late August through September, October, sometimes part of November, <clears throat> excuse me, and 
This is why I plant these from seed. And I do this because the hummingbirds absolutely love this flower. And it is a cross between a red morning glory and a red cypress vine. And it does have an airy, an airy um, leaf to it. But the other thing I want to share with you is it will really, it can get very thick stems, as you can see, to support the growth. And so I've had a few questions about how, how many seeds do I plant? And I have five, a five piece large panel trellis here that I've put up. And there are probably, I thought it was maybe about 50 seeds, but it's more like probably 75. And I plant them all throughout and on in the ground where the panels are. So that's just an idea of how many seeds that we have that just supports all of this amount of plant. And as I zoom out a little bit, the surprise of my center garden is this plant. And this is a dwarf porter weed. It is taller than I am. It is not dwarf. I did plant it in the ground. And it has a smaller bloom spike and of course a little bit smaller flower. This is like the blue porter weed. It reminds me of the blue porter weed stem, the, the bloom spike. But it is just huge and it's taken over parts of my garden bed and I don't, I love it. And it has pollinators on it all day long. I just did not expect this dwarf to to grow like this. So this has been a learning for me. And then I have a hot lips back here. And it does have the bicolor bloom on it. Let's see if I can get back here. So this is the hot lips salvia. I'm real curious. It didn't really bloom a whole lot. It bloomed some during the summer but it didn't like the high temperatures and it I, the foliage on it is not great so we'll see we'll see how it does in the fall but if I had to choose hot lips or this huge dwarf porter weed I would select this every day so I need to figure out a different salvia here I think because I'm not very happy with hot lips and then I have which reseeded itself Tithonia and Tithonia will always have a place in my garden it will always have a place in the garden because of how the butterflies respond to it. They absolutely love Tithonia flowers. Okay, let me come back out. So as I come back out along the side, I have a little Joe pie weed that's starting to die back. I have um, some Rose Marvel, Salvia Nemorosa, that are starting to get taken over by this dwarf porter weed. I have a rose yarrow that is blooming much better now that the temperatures have gotten cooler. I've got a couple of pots that I have purchased that I've not planted yet. And it looks like I've lost a coneflower. And I have coneflower here, but back here is something that I'm really disappointed in that my porter weed is starting to overtake and this is this Sto this Stokes Aster which I have the variety called Peachy's Pick and I love these asters and I was just stunned with how much this porter weed has grown so I need to figure out because I want more of these asters in my yard so I've got to figure out what I can do to 
because of course I want the porter weeds, so I've got to figure out, I think, a little bit better spacing. So I'm going to go back in the back here. So I planted cannas back here, and typically I really like the some of the flowers that I've seen, but I don't like what I have, and I have the president. They've grown beautiful and large, and they are a host plant to a Brazilian skipper. It's not the most pretty butterfly. It's just kind of brown and drab. And these are what's known as leaf rollers. And so they pretty much can, can you know, damage a lot of the foliage. But I just don't like the flowers, even though they are a, a pollinator favorite. So I don't think I'm going to have cannas again. What do you all think? How many of you like to grow cannas. I thought I was, I was so excited. I thought I was going to love them and I'm not a huge fan. So as I come out, I also had a canna in a container and next to it, I have a gorgeous Mexican flame vine. And this thing is huge. It is just beautiful. It's growing up a trellis and it flowered prolifically for me let me get back here flowered prolifically for me in the spring and now it's flowering little bits here and there in the fall this is a plant that butterflies also really really like i was hoping to get another huge flush i'm wondering I've never planted this from seed. I'm curious if these come up from seed well. I know they, I know they propagate very well if you break off a piece because that's what I have around the um, self bend that I showed you earlier. So anyway, this is a huge flower producer in the spring. And as you can see, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And it has grown up my trellis so wonderfully. I really like it. I just wish it flowered more and more of the season for me. So as I pan the plants, I've got some Turk's cap over here that's not doing great. It's okay, but it's not great. And I have containers. You can see the sun is starting to really come out. But I have hibiscus and I have some um, I've got a kufia on the end here. I've got an azalea. Let me come over. I do want to show in particular, talk about one plant. So I know that the sun has, is washing out the colors here, but this is called a wishbone flower and or terenia. Let me see if I can pull this out. So I've just moved it temporarily so I could talk about it. The Terenier or Wishbone Flower is an annual for us in Zone 9. And it is a beautiful summer flower, especially if you are looking at a hanging basket or you want um, a filler and a spiller. It has grown for me all summer long. It takes our heat, it takes our humidity. It just grows like a champ. This happens to be a proven winner's plant, but I love Terenia. I will get it because of how it performs in the south down here. So I just wanted to draw your attention to this. We almost killed this. There was only like four or five strands left because we had left for four days and it did not get watered and we thought it was a goner and it came back beautifully. Okay, so I'm in the sun here. I'm going to go over to the shady area of the garden. So over here in the shady area, I have got the ground cover that's starting to come back. This is for my pipe vine swallowtails. And this ground cover is called a white veined Dutchman's pipe vine. I think it's been eaten to the ground five times now <laughs> through the summer 
and this allows me to have the beautiful black and blue butterflies in my yard all the time because it is constantly it just grows so quickly I'm so pleased with with it and then right next to it above it is the beautiful salvia madrensis and this is a it's just it's been flowering a little bit here and I have seen my hummingbirds on this and they have been over here eating bugs oh, this is not there we go eating bugs and just munching and drinking the nectar on this salvia madrensis so I have a large stand here that got flattened by our hurricane but we have kind of staked it up let me go in the back so what my husband did was kind of created a lattice work from bamboo spikes and I think we're really happy with this because the salvia madrensis did not break during the hurricane and we've been able to keep it upright and now is when it stars and it blooms this butter yellow colored flower and I see the hummingbirds over here <laughs> all the time and they eat the bugs back here and they're talking and I'm really happy with this stand it started out a little precarious for me because I had had only a couple plants and I lost one and it was hard to get them but boy I love how they are growing now and I am just so pleased now I'm excited because now is when they're really hopefully going to start flowering so those of you that have followed my channel, you know that I've been really excited for, or I was really excited with some of the specialty coleus that I purchased through the mail. And I do have to say that it, it did not perform like I was hoping it would perform. I didn't get the dramatic colors that I expected. And so I, you know went by with what you see online and the colors did not come even close to what was what was shown online <laughs> so it was a good learning for me but in this bed it did get hit very very hard by our hurricane it flattened a lot of the coleus that had been growing and I did not I staked a little bit of it up but I did not do a whole lot with it so it, that's disappointing but I do have to say it's healthy it's flowering you know it's not how I had envisioned but I am I'm still happy with it I do have a Turks cat back here that gets a little bit of morning Sun and I planted these from seed actually so these are a native to Texas and the hummingbirds love and the bees love Turk's cap. I really like that, that caladium here. So anyway, this was not the, the shade bed necessarily that I envisioned, but I am, I am happy with it. Or I should say I'm resigned to what, <laughs> to what I was left with. And then for those of you that follow my channel, I planted caladiums from bulbs all throughout through this fence and they're in the ground they are protected by a a plastic barrier but they didn't fare too well in the late summer and they again were a product of not enough water and you can see here look at the crack oof from not getting enough water and that's because we had a fail in our drip irrigation system and so um, you know that's a learning for me and then what's interesting is I have a volunteer coleus and you know 
I have no idea what this coleus is, but that was where a caladium was, and now I have a volunteer. So, go figure. And another thing I like to do on our north fence is we plant from seed our cardinal climber, and we plant that in the ground, and I we use fishing line to create the to create the support structure for the cardinal climber and it's flowering beautifully here and of course the hummingbirds just love it so I'm going to come out look at this beautiful beautiful gorgeous giant milkweed. <laughs> it's huge. I love it. I love the healthiness of it. It's just, it's an interesting plant and it does support monarchs, lots of monarchs in the spring. And then over on this side, I do have a coral honeysuckle that I have not figured out what to do with because it's so huge not coral honeysuckle this is a um, coral porter weed and it's flowering beautifully on this north end here it doesn't get full sun it gets morning some morning sun and some dappled shade but it is just huge and sprawling all over the place I need to take a cutting it's just it's it's almost unmanageable it is so large And finally, my challenge in my north bed here. Oh, I just am sick to my stomach in what I've lost. And that was due to our, our drip irrigation failure. And the reason it failed is it got plugged with sediment. And we did not know it. We had a, we had a I guess, work going on outside of our, our subdivision. And they broke a, a water line. And when they repaired it, there was a lot of sediment that came through. Sediment, excuse me. And it plugged our lines and we didn't know until it was too late. So I have a few cone flowers that were able to make it. But all of my, all of my fennel has died. I'm so, I just am heartbroken. So I need to get some more fennel. And I think I lost my maraschino bush salvia. That one I'm thinking is still okay because I do see some green growth on it, but oh, it's just heart sick. And then I have uh, Henry Duelberg salvia, which is a native on the end, and then Mystic Spires over here. And then a little bit of Greg's Mist Flower that I've got growing on this side. It even had a most difficult time in in the conditions that this bed had Ugh. so that made me unfortunately things like that happen in the garden and you just regroup and I guess I need to look at this as a as an opportunity to now include other things if I'm interested so this was definitely a long a very long garden tour I really am happy that you joined me at this end of September. Down south of Houston in Zone 9, we still have easily two months of growing season left. And plants are just beautiful for us at this time of year. And so it can be difficult because we're tired as gardeners. <laughs> and in the heat of summer, sometimes it's easy to get very burned out. But when you come out and you see now how your plants are responding to the more, the more temperate weather and they're coming back and they're just giving you blooms and you've got hummingbirds and butterflies and bees all in your gardens. It kind of gives you a, 
renewed sense of happiness. I know I like to come out every day and just see how things have changed, even if it has to be early in the, in the heat of the summer. But fall doesn't really seem like fall to us because it's still so warm. We haven't really had a wonderful cool down yet. Oh, I'm gonna zoom in on my hummingbird here. Oh, nope, she's gonna, she's gonna continue to fly. Anyway, I really appreciate you coming along with me on this journey. Sometimes growing plants in a very hot and humid climate can be a challenge. And the key is to find plants that do really, really well. So I'm going to end on my what? lantana. On my rose lantana. So I hope you all have a wonderful day today. And I sure hope to see you again soon.